Hey there, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Shane and we're taking a look at refurbishing my old David Brown 990 tractor here, redoing the hydraulics on it. And in a previous video, I had made an attempt at making a service tool that lets you set the uh, tolerances for the spool valve, abutment, uh, the abutment plate and the arm that goes up to it, and for the TCU valve. And I didn't do a very good job of making that tool. So this weekend, I went down the path of making another one. So this one actually does much better. I was able to hit the correct tolerances on the top of the holes here within a, a thousandth, I, I believe. And I'm very happy with how this turned out. If you'll stay with me here, if you're interested in how to make one of these, I'll go through and just give you some of the, the overall dimensions of what I used and how I made this. Uh, this is 16 gauge steel. I was going through a closet and found that I had an actual sheet of 16 gauge metal about yay by yay. So I was like, huh, I don't have to go buy anything. Uh, the other tool that I made, I think it was in the video on going through the valve chest was made of a much thinner gauge steel and I didn't have the right tooling to get the dimensions where it is. If you go up to uh, the corner up here somewhere, I'll link to a video of Barry's, uh, the man from the mist. He made one of these and he went through the dimensions and everything as well. But he used a reamer to ream out these holes and get up to the right dimensions. And I didn't have a reamer when I made the other one, so I was just having to wallow through with a, a drill and try to get it close. Uh, that didn't work at all. But uh, what I wound up doing was I bought a set of cheap reamers, uh, adjustable hand reamers off Amazon. One time use is all I was needing out of it, and but I didn't break anything, so uh, maybe I can get another couple of uses of them if I need to in the future, but it was a one-time thing and I bought a set, a set of small reamers and I was able to ream these holes out to the correct top dimensions for making this service tool. So let's zoom on in here and take a look at this. Like I said in the earlier video, I did not remove any part of this abutment plate or I'm not, and I'm not going back off the TCU valve adjustment screw here at all. My spool valve was set up correctly for the tolerances it's supposed to be at, and I'm assuming again the TCU valve is also correct. So here's a close-up of that tool. It's basically a high tolerance tool, or high precision tool for the top part of that uh, hole. The top part of the hole has to be 0.437 inches from the bottom of the uh, top from the bottom of the top of the tool. <laughs> Let me make sure I can say that right. Uh, the bottom hole has to be 1.580 inches right here from the top of this uh, the top of the plate here from the bottom of the top. I think I said that right. We'll see. But anyway, it fits. Let's just do the top one here. See how this works. You put it in the top hole there. And then you're able to measure the tolerance of this uh, arm here that pushes on the spool valve. You're able to test the tolerance of it and it should be within one to three thousandths Got some feeler gauges here. This is a two thousandths feeler gauge. And I, I can't quite get a two thousandths feeler gauge in there. I have a one and a half thousandth feeler gauge. And look at there. One and a half thousandths feeler gauge goes right in between the spool valve and that arm. And I'm right in tolerance. In that previous video where I said I was confident that my abutment plate was shimmed correctly, well now I'm absolutely confident that everything associated with the abutment plate is correct. So I'm very happy with that. 
right? For the TCU valve, I can't really do anything with the TCU valve. Like I said, I'm not going back off this adjustment nut any, but I was able to, you know, I, mean, I can, I'm approximating here. I don't know if you can see this or not in the video. Let me check and see. Not really. I wanted to scoot you guys a little closer. So you can see down to that TCU screw, or TCU valve, I should say. So maybe we can see that. I'm gonna lift up just a bit on the on the arm here, just to get it off just from contacting. The adjustment says that you're supposed to take this to where it just touches, put a two thousandths feeler gauge in between there until it just touches, take the feeler gauge out, and then screw the adjustment screw in one turn, right? Uh, if you look in the book, um, I may put a picture here of the adjustment of the TCU screw up on the screen. So basically you get it as close as you can, putting a two thousandths feeler gauge in, get it just touching, take the feeler gauge out, and then you run this screw in one turn. So I'm approximating one turn here. You see how it, I pushed it all the way, I pushed the uh, top of the tool down to where it's supposed to be, and you could see that it pushed in that TCU valve just a bit. So I'm kind of happy with this. I mean, it. I'm again, I'm not going to take it out and redo anything here, but just touching, and then I'm going to push it down to where the tool is supposed to be on the edge of the housing here. And you see it pushes it in just a little bit. I'm thinking that would be about one turn. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, so let's go through some of the measurements on this to see if you can possibly make one of your own design. It's a fairly simple process. I took the metal, put it in my vise, so I cut it out, and put it in my vise over here and made an approximation of a 90 degree angle. So let's go through some of these measurements. Okay. Total width of the top, 2.790. There are two separate areas on this top here. There's a wider piece on the right and a shorter piece on the left. Shorter piece is mine, 0.835. And in truth, it could have been a little bit wider. This part has to be a little bit shorter in width to allow it to clear this part of this frame coming in. And I actually have a little bit extra room right here. It could have been 0 0.130 even uh, wider. The width of the top, the, the wide part, 1.024. The width of it to the bend, 1.453. The length of the, I'm gonna call this the leg. Got it is 2.328. And one of the things you have to do when you make this is allow for enough room that when it goes down into the bottom, it has enough room to clear uh, a piece of the casting down inside, which is why when you see on the drawing, it has a little curve right here where it short, where it, it, it narrows up going down the rest of the length. At its narrowest, which actually does fit, I'm at 0.545.
All right, let's talk about the holes for just a minute. So on the holes, there's not a really good way uh, to measure this. I bent the top over first to get it approximating 90 degree uh, angle. But then I'm like, how were we supposed to get a good accurate measurement on being 0.437 to the bottom of the top part here? How am I supposed to do that? And so what I wound up doing is taking the width of the top part and adding it to the 0.437 coming up with, and this in 16 gauge steel, at least this part, this, this steel for me is 0 0.063 inches. So I added 0 0.063 to 0 0.437 to get the total width of the from the top of the hole up to the top, and that winds up being exactly half an inch, 0.5. I was able to get it just inside, just to where the, the calipers, the, the measuring device here would slide in at the hole at half an inch, 0 0.500. So the top hole, right on target. It's the most accurate thing I've ever made in my life. With the highest precision, that is. I do not have a mill, I do not have a lathe, yet. I need one. If anybody in the central Alabama, south Alabama area has a mill or lathe for sale that's you know reasonable, let me know. I did the same thing with the bottom hole. The bottom hole is supposed to be 1.580 from the top of the hole to the bottom of the top. Add in. The width, 0.063, you get, uh, where's my calculation here? You get 1.643, all right? And so if I measure 1.643, there it is, 1.643. So I hit that one right on target as well. The pin that this, these holes go on, I'll lift it up here so you can see, this pin right here, this shaft inside the housing is what these holes attach to or go over. This shaft is 3 8 wide, 0.357. Using, I wasn't using any documentation. I actually measured it's 0.357 in width. So I have that. I got, I got the measurement down to where I could draw a line, draw, you know, scrap a line across where that was supposed to, where the top of the line is supposed to be, where the top of the hole is supposed to be. Then I measured down half of the width of that pin and made another line. And then I came in with a punch, put a punch mark in, similar to what Barry showed on his video, put a punch in, and I was able to drill a 3 8 hole, you know, stepping up to it, uh, stepping up to the 3 8 hole on both of these. I basically did the same thing. I bought these from Amazon. Set of adjustable reamers, adjustable hand reamers. Uh, I was I slid it up to about halfway here and was able to ream out the holes. These are this is a tapered reamer. Thank you, Barry, for your video on this, I would not have thought to have used a hand reamer. But basically, you slide the hand reamer in the hole and take out and t start taking out metal until you hit the right dimension. Turn it a few times, check the measurement. Turn it a few times, check the measurement. And so I was able to actually manufacture my home version of this. This is that setting gauge as described in the service manuals. David Brown part number 961796. Made my own. I'm very happy with that. It worked out really well. Adjustable hand reamers. All right, I think that's about all I wanted to update you guys on today. I made this. It's made. It's pretty accurate. Next steps are to install the valve chest and the bracket here back onto the ramshaft, rock shaft, whatever you want to call it, and get it inserted back into the tractor. 
that'll be, I believe, the next video that you guys see coming out is the whole process of doing that. It might take a week. It might take a couple of weeks for me to get around to doing that. I'm, I'm starting to get really, really busy here. So there may be some time in between this video and the next one. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Oh, and other news, Lance over at Bundy Bear Shed, he has bought him a David Brown 880. I'm really looking forward to seeing him go through that tractor and school me on the things I'm doing wrong. So he's an expert on those things, apparently. And I'm really interested to see Lance tackle that 880. It's uh, apparently got some hydraulics issues. So we'll see how the real tractor repair people can service and work on these David Browns. So I'm looking forward to seeing that, Lance. Good job getting that tractor. I think that does it for the update here today. Thanks for watching and y'all have a great day.